impossibilities of failure and despair. So God, I'll stand with open hands and heart just fixed on following. I'll keep my eyes on this day's prize. fantasies of what my life could be Captive to the highwayman of fear He's robbing me of everything that's right in front of me I learn to see what's given to me and cherish every part of it child that cries within The wounds that weep with bitterness Of innocence betrayed Help me on the hurt behind the sin Let healing and forgiveness flow Like cool refreshing rain So with each day I'll choose to say With laughter and sorrow Yeah, courage to take One step at a time Today is my gift, not tomorrow Courage to walk With Christ in my sight The past with laughter and sorrow So today our theme is discovering a fervent faith. Here we go, that's our theme for today. And um, we had a lovely reading from Jim, uh, the chapter of Daniel chapter 6. But what a wonderful and powerful story, Daniel chapter 6. And here we find one of the most beloved Bible stories, Bible characters, Daniel and the lion's den. And once again, we have King Nebuchadnezzar, who is no longer king. 
He lost his sanity. He went a bit crazy and he was driven out of the kingdom of Babylon. And after him came another king. Confusingly, he is called Belshazzar. Keeping in mind that Daniel's Babylonian name is Belteshazzar. So that's not confusing whatsoever. But this king didn't rule very long because he too worshipped false gods and he was eventually assassinated. Here we have King Darius. He is then put in power, put in charge of Babylon. His plan is to divide the kingdom into 120 different provinces. And he's going to place these princes overseeing every single one of these provinces. So Daniel is an excellent leader, an amazing leader. And the other 120 leaders uh, were put under him, um, but they become threatened. They are jealous of Daniel. He is an amazing leader. And they plan, they plot to get rid of Daniel. They want to knock off Daniel. Keeping in mind that Daniel is about 80 years old at this point. And he has served the Babylonian kingdom very, very well, very faithfully. He's a devoted man of God. And he prays unreservedly for three times a day. And he puts God first in all of his affairs. And I've heard of stories of people that pray so often they have calluses on their knees. Church, do you have calluses on your knees? (laughs) But the point is that we should be a praying people. Daniel says such a wonderful example of prayer and of faithful prayer. Now, these 120 princes try to use this knowledge that he is a faithful, devout man of God, and they set up a trap. They pray, or they, they, this is the option, you pray to King Darius for 30 days, for one month, or be thrown to these hungry lions. And I'm not sure, we watched the children's story, they had pizza with the lions. I'm not sure that pizza would be enough for the lions. Perhaps uh, they would actually eat the people here. But all we know, um, what happens in the story, well, we know what happens, and that is that God delivers Daniel. Let me just pause here for a moment. God saves Daniel. Daniel, miraculously, from hungry lions. They're not interested in pizza. They're interested in eating whatever falls down into that pit. And God's enemies in the story are stopped. They are destroyed. But I'm sure many Sunday school versions leave out the gory details. I don't know if you heard the end of that Bible story. Pretty gory. I know the VeggieTales version. Uh, the bad guys ran off to Egypt to go work in Egypt. But uh, it wasn't a very happy ending for them. But the overarching theme in this Bible story is that God is our deliverer. Can I get an amen? Just to check that you're awake today. God is our deliverer. Amen. 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 He will rescue us. He will save us in our difficulty. I studied this Bible passage and I wondered, is there something new that we could learn from this very well-known Bible story? And this is what came to me. I think that Daniel prospered in life because he spent every single day as if it were his last. He spent every single day as if it were his last day on earth. Let me explain what I mean by this. Daniel lived in a time of uncertainty. Perhaps we can relate to Daniel's uh, story in this regard. For we live in a time of uncertainty too, don't we church? We definitely live in uncertain times. In Daniel's day, the Hebrews were exiled to Babylon. So they weren't in their homeland anymore. They are oppressed. They're living in constant fear and worry. And in Daniel's day, God's people were expected to conform to the norms of society. And that was to worship false gods, adopt pagan beliefs and customs, just as Christians today are constantly under pressure to follow what's popular in society rather than staying faithful to their foundational Christian beliefs, their biblical values. In Daniel's day, people were expected to bow down to false gods. Today, people generally, they worship anything and everything other than the one true God. I think that one of the greatest idols in our modern society is self. Do you agree with me with that? I think in our modern society, people like to worship themselves uh, or for their own betterment, uh, their own interests. There definitely is, I think there's this pressure in society to love, 
to adore, to prioritize oneself above anything else, to pamper ourselves. We love to live in luxury and sometimes to even elevate ourselves. In Daniel's day, compromise was expected. Compromise was definitely expected. And I believe that although we live in a different day and age, nothing has really changed for us. Even though we live thousands of years later, in this Bible story, we learn that, David, that Daniel, David, Daniel didn't compromise. And that is why he's such a huge Bible character, a hero to us. That is why he is so well loved, even today. We admire his faithfulness to God. Just imagine praying three times a day. Where are you off to now? I'm off to go and pray. Wow, what an example, what role modeling. Faithfulness to God, despite all the pressures that he faced, despite all the threats against him. And in this story, it makes us wonder, how would we respond in a similar circumstance? You may think that's unimaginable, but how would you respond if you were put in this position? Would you compromise and decide, okay, maybe just push pause on praying to God? Would you be willing to stand up for what you believe in? even if that means death, not just any kind of death, death by the jaws of lions, death by lions. What would you have done in this situation? Would you have compromised your faith or would you stand with your convictions? Daniel knew that one day would be his last and he learned from the impulsive king Nebuchadnezzar that earthly kings can get very angry and they don't get their own, especially when they don't get their own way, they take it out on those closest to them. We learnt about this when the king demanded that people tell him what he dreamt. And when people couldn't exactly tell him specifically what he dreamt, he ordered their executions. Daniel treated life cautiously, not taking each day for granted. Every single day that Daniel lived was lived as though it could be his last. Daniel was definitely a man of integrity. He was a man of faith. He didn't seek to uplift himself, elevate himself. He always tried to elevate God. And when we, we can actually see this in Daniel chapter 5, verses 16 to 17, where Daniel demonstrates that he wasn't really bothered about powerful positions, about his status, about wealth. He didn't pray three times a day to be a show-off. He didn't do that to make other people jealous, to show them up. He was diligent in his leadership responsibilities. He was diligent in his spiritual journey. He wasn't trying to make the other 120 princes look bad. He was just living every day to the best of his abilities. Sadly, the Babylonian princes, they didn't see it that way because Daniel's diligence, his holiness, exposed their flaws. Daniel was living his life as though it had eternal consequences. He knew that a close relationship with God was paramount. It was paramount to prosper in this life despite whatever circumstances he found himself in. Daniel knew there was supernatural power in prayer. Prayer was very, very important to Daniel. And I believe there was power, or he knew that there was power that goes beyond this temporary world and it connects with the spiritual world. The power of Daniel's prayers becomes evident time and time again in the book of Daniel. Through prayer, Daniel can identify mysterious dreams. He could actually find out what those mysterious dreams meant, interpret them, complex dreams. He could protect his friends from burning in a fiery furnace. He could shut the mouths of lions who were otherwise, they would have eaten him. Daniel prayed as if everything depended upon it. Do you pray, church, as if everything depends on your prayers? Give me some fervent nods there. Yes, I pray every day, fervently believe in that. And this is what William Booth actually said. Pray as if Everything depended upon your prayer. That's our founder. This weekend we celebrate Founders Day. Our founder encouraging us not to forget the fundamentals. Pray as if everything 
depends upon your prayers. James 5.16 says that when a believing person prays, great things happen. Definitely great things happen. The New King James Version says it this way, the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Now, that's an odd word, fervent. What does the word fervent mean? To have great intensity of feeling. To have great intensity of feeling. It really, to, to really mean that when we pray, it's not just that spoken liturgy of prayers that we recite, those common prayers that we just roll off our tongues. It's to really mean it, to have great intensity of feeling, that passion to connect with the Holy Spirit when we pray, to pray in the power of the Spirit, to believe it, to really believe it, to have faith that when you pray, it will happen. We're activating something in heaven when we pray that way. And that's how Daniel lived, treating each day as if it could be his last. There we go, fervent. Oh, here we go. Have you ever watched the movie Groundhog Day? Yes, I'm sure we've all, uh, maybe a long time ago, it's an old movie now, but in this movie, in this movie, uh, the same day is relived by the main character over and over and over again. It's only once this man, this main character in our story, appreciates the nuances, the details in the day that he can actually break the cycle of reliving the same day. It's only when he treats the day with respect, living in the moment, living as though it were the most important day of his entire life. That's the only way he could be delivered from this time loop in the story. Let me tell you another story. It reminds me um, of this whole theme of, um, of praying as though it's important and that it's meaningful. There's a story that's told and it was the 26th of February, six, sorry, 1968, and James Steagles was very far away from home. He was serving a tour of duty in Vietnam. The jungle was deadly quiet, and you could hear a pin drop. All of a sudden, there was this loud, metallic, piercing scream echoing in the hot jungle. It was the unmistakable sound of a rocket shooting towards him from the enemy. His heart started thumping in his chest, and a very quick-thinking friend shoved him into a foxhole, foxhole, there you can see it there, and he braced himself for this explosion. But there was this surreal silence that followed. The fuse on the rocket had malfunctioned. Steagles crouched into the foxhole for five hours. Can you imagine being crouched uh, for five hours in that uh, position? And this happened he was crouching while the battle raged, but in his shirt pocket he had a Gideon's New Testament Bible. With shake your fingers, he read Matthew 18, verse 19 to 20, and he felt this mysterious peace fall all over him. Years later, years later, back home in America, Stegels visited his grandmother. She told him the story, how one night she had feared for her grandson's safety. She had stayed up all night praying for him, fervently praying for her grandson. She showed him her prayer journal, and it was Matthew 18, verses 19 to 20. Again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. And after reading this passage, she told her grandson that she'd phoned her friend and the two of them had prayed fervently throughout the night for him. Stegals' grandmother showed him the date. It was the 26th of February, 1968, the same day that Stegals was fighting for his life in Vietnam. What an amazing testimony there. Wow, such a great story, an amazing, encouraging story because it's evidence that prayer is still powerful now. Do you believe that? Give me a, a vague note. <laughs> prayer is still powerful today as it was in Daniel's day. It's evidence that our God 
He does see the bigger picture over our lives. Devoting our lives to God like Daniel will mean that we will prosper. But it takes courage in the face of the opposition in this world, a world that's trying to take us in a different direction. Daniel wasn't successful in life because he was lucky. Many say they are lucky in this world. He wasn't lucky. He wasn't just privileged. He wasn't better than you or me. He was successful because he lived every day in such a way that every single conversation that he had was meaningful. When he listened to people, he listened well. When he worked, he worked with integrity. When he worshipped, it was diligent and unashamedly. When he prayed, it was from the bottom of his heart. He put God first and he meant it. He refused to compromise or water down his faith. He stood tall with integrity, <coughs> elevating God. He trusted God for protection, for wisdom, whatever he needed. May you be encouraged today as well to be diligent like Daniel, devoting your every day in prayer to pray fervently with feeling, intense feeling and believing that God will come through for us. May you be encouraged to seek a closer relationship with God. Despite the pressure from the world to take our attention away from Him, despite the fears or the concerns you may face, may you be encouraged to think about your life today. Are you treating every single day as if it is a gift? It is a precious gift. You're not just treating it with contempt, missing out on the goodness that's all around you focused perhaps more on your troubles rather than on your deliverer? Are you treating each day as if it were extremely precious? You all know the famous evangelist Billy Graham, and he often told people that you may be hit by a bus, hopefully not, hit by a bus on your way home, your heart may not be so tender as it is right now. So perhaps respond. Respond to the gospel here and now while you still have a chance, while you still have time. Is your life right with God? Are there things in your life that you need to confess to Him? Are you ready to meet with your Maker? So let's spend some time in prayer and in reflection. Perhaps you just want to rekindle that flame, that closeness with God today. And you're welcome to come up front and pray up front here by our mercy seat or just to pray wherever you are. But there's no better time than right now to make sure that we have a fervent faith in the Lord. And let's spend some time as we listen to this lovely song, Here We Are. Here we are Lifting our hands to you Worship your holy name. 
yet to be. So much is yet to be. The trials we may have to face. When we'll be leaning on your grace. Oh yes, it will be your strength. Yes, it will. That saves us. Your love that makes us strong. Thank you, Lord.